Hey guys, it's Marie Antoinette here for your Mental Health Monday again and we have Red Dog on the lounge again and I'm just going to show him there he is fast asleep hopefully he's not going to be naughty this evening as we get into our subject for today hope you guys can hear me clearly I'm just going to see who comes on board we're talking about vulnerability tonight so I put a post up a bit earlier about vulnerability and mental health because it is extremely important and there are a lot of different reasons why we don't show vulnerability when it comes to our feelings so I'm going to put out a question tonight and I'd love for people to um, interact and let me know about some of the things that they, that might stop them from being vulnerable so the question to you tonight is this what stops you from being vulnerable when it comes to sharing your feelings so there's going to be a number of different um, reasons I'm not sure if everybody's going to be putting a comment up but I'm going to start talking about some of those reasons that might be present for us when we don't want to talk about how we feel so many different reasons so some of the reasons might be that you hey Samantha hey William thanks for jumping on um, some of the reasons that you might not be vulnerable are fear of overwhelming others fear that somebody might use what you say against you uh, it might be um, a fear of trusting in somebody else it might be a fear that you have that if you feel that you share some of the things that you might be feeling you might be seen as somebody who's not coping if you have a look at the information I put at the top of this video um, it will say things like what I've put up there is basically that sometimes it's a bit of an illusion when or what we see is not coping so a lot of the times it's a huge illusion when people are feeling that they're not coping but the reality is is that when we're feeling we're actually healing depression actually means to push down so if we're not in in touch with our feelings or if we're not feeling them and we're cut off from them it's a major issue because we can't express we can't set boundaries with other people we can't express how we're feeling we can't connect with another and we're feeling really really disconnected and sometimes the opposite of that hey Chantel hey Diana um, the opposite of um, feeling too much is feeling too overwhelmed feeling like we can't cope feeling like something's wrong but a lot of the times when hey Conrad a lot of the times when we're feeling things it's because you know that there's something going on and there's something going on in our body and we need to express it or we need to um, basically feel it because if we feel it that's what we're doing when we're healing so I'm going to give you an example about when it comes to grief so a lot of people say let's say that um, something has happened and there's a loss of some sort now when people are grieving a lot or they're crying a lot or they're expressing a lot of that stuff is a lot of people may look at them and say oh they're not coping um, and there's this misconception that they're not coping but really um, they're actually feeling and they're feeling what they need to feel and it's important for them to feel those things so obviously um, a lot of the time too there's a lot of shame when it comes to uh, feelings so hey Michael um, there's a lot of shame when it comes to feelings so if you're feeling something you might be telling yourself I shouldn't be feeling this I should be okay there is so much I mean I know the importance of feeling you know having a background in therapy I have it have a lots of lots of my own healing path as well in helping others but still it's so ingrained in us and even in myself sometimes I need to remind myself hey it's okay to be feeling this it's okay so I'm talking about that because if we don't initially say to ourselves it's okay that I'm feeling this it's it's applicable to the situation or it's important for me to feel this or it's important for my healing to feel this that's the first step in being able to be able to share our vulnerability with people if people don't see us and they don't see what's really going on for us we can't ever get support so support is massively important so often um, it, and it's a real um, I was gonna say yeah I will say it. it's a very, very European thing too actually um, and, and across many other different cultures too to pretend to pretend that we're okay no everything's okay no everything's fine we don't want to trouble people we don't want to worry people we don't want to do all these things 
But if we're not real and we're not seen, then we're going to become very disconnected from our own things and we're going to become disconnected from other people and we're not going to be able to have that support coming in. And so that mindset about not coping is the biggest thing that actually stops us. I love you too, Michael. That stops us from being vulnerable because we may be seen or perceived as being weak. We may be perceived as, well, again, not coping. We may be perceived as um, somebody who just needs to get their stuff together. Um, hitting the nail on the head, babes, this is awesome. Yes. Um, and so one of the biggest things about, um, I'm going to use the words being seen. So as human beings, it's important for us to be seen. And what I mean by that is to really be seen for who we are and where we're at. Um, I'm going to give an example now from the very, very first time when we get born. If babies are not actually held or touched or acknowledged or have that comfort, they actually die. Now, when we bring that into present day and we're not really seen, like let's say you're going through a really difficult time, but nobody knows about it. Nobody sees that you're going through these problems that you're having. Nobody sees that you're really struggling. Nobody sees that inside of you, you're having all this turmoil. That's the same as not being acknowledged. It's the same as not being connected. It's the same as not being met where you're at. Now, a number of different things could be happening. It could be, because, again, because you're telling yourself, it's really not okay for me to share this stuff. It's not okay to tell people or it's a weakness and all that kind of stuff. So my challenge to you this evening is, um, is to really think about how you do that in your own life. How do you put those walls around you? How do you put those, um, well, well, they're big fences, um, big fences around what we put around ourselves so that people can't see our struggles. The reality is this, is when we are struggling or when we're really expressing our struggle, it actually gives other people permission for two things. One for them is to actually admit their own struggle and see that it's okay that you're doing that. And number two is that they can then support you and be there for you and being able to let, let, let somebody in. Now, I actually wasn't sure about what topic I was going to do this evening. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Gabrielle. Um, but I, I thought of uh, vulnerability because uh, somebody reached out to me recently who watches my videos and, and follows me on Facebook and asked me about psychosis and he asked me, uh, a couple of things and I shared with him about my own diagnosis years ago with bipolar and also having psychotic episodes and he said I would never have thought and I thought to myself well that's really interesting because perception is very very interesting obviously I don't get on my Facebook lives a blubbering mess or crying or having all sorts of stuff because that's not what we do and Facebook is so full of illusions of happy faces and beautiful families and lovely events and a lot of this stuff isn't shared because it's not real life is it but the reality is is that um, we all have issues and we all have things that we've been through and this is the thing if we don't share it and we don't allow our vulnerability to come out people don't know they don't know about what struggles that we have and we can be an inspiration to other people and there's a togetherness you know, a lot of vulnerability and a lot of pain and struggle brings togetherness. It brings comfort. It brings support. Hey, Frank, uh, it brings all those things together if we're able to be vulnerable. So a little bit of shame reduction around mental health issues too because it's often known that when people uh, who have had those issues, other people give themselves permission to say, oh, oh, okay, yeah, well, I struggle too. And it's okay to struggle. A lot of people do struggle and we don't often share that stuff for multiple reasons and obviously there's important um, I guess parameters around sharing those things around who you're going to share that with or whether it's safe enough to share that stuff with or but the reality is is that if we are real with ourselves and we're acknowledging what's going on for us and then we share it with another we allow that door to be open and it's okay but the first key is admitting to ourselves first of all that it's okay to be having a difficult time or uh, to be experiencing the emotions that, 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 that we're experiencing. It's a normal human default too, to um, we have pleasure center, a uh, pleasure center in our brain that we're always seeking happiness, we're always seeking pleasure, we're always looking for those things. So 
it is a common thing to, you know, obviously when we're having some difficult times to just go, something's wrong, something's wrong, I need to stop this. It's, it's, it's a human nature, automatic default thing. And it's a good habit to get into is to just explore it, you know. Um, I know Frank would know who's watching this, who has a, has a therapy background, would know that when we go, when we're having our feelings, it's just to actually sit with it and explore it and see what's going on with it. With mental health, it would become a very medicated society and it's all about eradication of any pain whatsoever. And, you know, true healing comes from feeling that, going into that, understanding it, expressing it, getting support, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. And the biggest key I want to say too is that, again, and I've mentioned it already before, that when we are vulnerable, it gives other people permission to do that. When we're okay with where we're at, and being messy and not having it all together and you know having having um, the polarity we can't we, we live in a world of polarity and I'm laughing at this because we can't really acknowledge a good day if we don't have a bad day and we can't acknowledge happiness if we don't have the opposite of that and we often tell ourselves that those things are bad feelings and all that kind of stuff and it's really not a bad thing it's just a feeling it just is so I'm leaving it a bit short tonight and I know I was just looking down the bottom there, hey Justin, um, that there isn't many questions or comments. I have to leave it short this evening. Uh, but if people want to comment later or if they feel that this video is going to be beneficial to other people, please share it so that other people can watch it as well. True, so important to experience that nobody is alone with their suffering. Yeah, I will comment on that. Thank you, Frank, for commenting. Hi, Diane. Um, because, yeah, being alone with suffering is probably compounds the pain that we can be in. And obviously, um, sometimes it's a bit of a trick our mind does, you know. Um, we can tell ourselves that nobody else understands what we're feeling. Um, and so that's the gift of vulnerability as well, the gift of vulnerability in sharing that, that we don't feel alone and that we feel that we're a part of. And we have the brain chemical oxytocin in our brain I often go on about that it's a very important chemical and it's actually the thing that drives us to bond with community and with other people and it's important for us not to feel alone thank you so much for that comment Frank so um, I do have to leave it short um, a bit like me um, if you want to know anything about my programs or anything that I do please uh, private message me um, I do have a website launch coming up soon I'm very excited about it. I'm working really hard on that um, and as always happy mental health Monday I hope you guys got a lot out of this video tonight see you guys <laughs>